As one of the main pillars of India's economy, the automotive industry is a good indicator of how well the country is doing. The contribution of this industry goes beyond economics to drive massive employment generation and technological advancement. Economic liberalization and enabling policy interventions over the past few years have created a vibrant and competitive market bringing in new players and deepening the presence of major global auto manufacturers in the country. India also has a robust auto component industry that has grown to be a reliable partner for both domestic as well as global OEMs. Turnover of the automotive component industry in India has broken all previous records, crossing $74 billion in FI24. In Pune, we visited Minda Corporation Limited, an automotive component company. While taking a tour of their facility, we discussed the trends and transitions in the auto industry that they are witnessing. What sort of trends are you uh, seeing in the Indian automobile industry? There is so much that is being spoken about how big this market is, you know, the, the drivers which are there. Yeah. So tell us, what are you seeing on ground? I think let's maybe put the things in perspective, you know, if we talk about overall Indian auto sector. Uh, so India in terms of two-wheelers, three-wheelers and tractors probably very amongst uh, leading uh, the global markets. And in terms of the PV segment, uh, we are at number three. This year, we crossed almost 400, uh, 4 million vehicles, right? The PV segment is uh, expected to be around 6.5 million uh, vehicle units by 2030. And similarly, uh, strong projections for the two-wheeler segment as well, which is around 25 million vehicles for by 2030. We expect that you know the industry will continue to grow as far as the uh, auto sector is concerned, which is, I would say, you know, is uh, contributed by multiple factors. So one is, you know, uh, the growth which is happening by the virtue of uh, uh, our economy, which is growing, which is forecasted to grow at a rate of uh, more than 7% year on year. I think that's one thing. One of the interesting things which is help happening in our country is, you know, in terms of the urbanization which is happening, uh, and at the same time, uh, uh, you know, the earning power of the people, which yeah. is per capita income, which is increasing. So at the same time, you know, there are some of the other policies which are being driven by the government, uh, whether it is in terms of, uh, if I can say, you know, scrappage policy, which is also going to give some impetus to uh, increase in the demand of the automotive segment. At the same time, you know, a lot of uh, uh, norms which are coming either from the safety point of view or probably, you know, regulations point of view, which is also bringing a lot of uh, new uh, elements which is going to help to uh, grow the industry. So if you can give us uh, what are the trends and shifts which we are seeing in the industry and how the Indian companies, right, like, like for yourself and think, are able to try to navigate that change. The major, if I can just say the change or transition which is happening is in terms of the preferences of the customers. The most of the customers are probably four or five years back we used to call India as a value for money kind of a auto industry but I think uh, that transition is happening where you know, the OEMs are looking, uh, sorry, the customers are looking for more features, uh, whether facilities in the in that segment. Yeah. Uh, so at the same time, uh, you would have observed that the way the auto sector has moved from the, if I can say, small vehicles, uh, A or B segment vehicles to the SUV. So SUV is almost contributing to 60% of the overall volumes. Yes, yes. Uh, that is at the same time uh, driving a lot of new features, uh, which is driven along with the safety regulation, but at the same time, premiumization which is happening in the sector, whether it is coming through data connectivity, whether it is coming through, if we take some of the examples like sunroof, which are being, uh, has increased uh, penetration in the upcoming vehicles or the vehicles which are introduced yeah, in the market. Yeah, almost 30% of the vehicle more than have now exactly. sunroofs. Yeah, so. And at the same time, you know, when we sit in the vehicle, we are looking for all the features like, uh, if yeah. I can say, uh, 
you know, ventilation of the seatings and then very nice cockpit safety and the expectation of the uh, customers are increasing significantly. That is opening a lot of opportunity for the new kind of industry to develop. Demand is coming up in terms of uh, new technologies, new manufacturing processes and a lot of localization is happening on that side of it. This is a trend which we have seen, uh, aspiration, I mean, the education, a lot of this young uh, generation is much more aspirational. And that's a trend across various sectors, which the automobile industry is a big, because it's an aspirational product, right? Exactly. You want to go and show off. And you see that mechanical systems in a vehicle is partly moving to mechatronics and then more and more uh, into digital and smart, you know. So, a example to say switches today, the, it was some time before a mechanical switches, it become a mechatronics and now you can't even see anywhere switches. Switches may be embedded on the uh, panel itself. Each domain of a component in a system in a vehicle is having this uh, premiumization effect, you know. The auto ancillary sector, what kind of a trends you see yeah. for that sector, both domestically as well on the export market also? See, the last year overall, the auto component industry revenue had been around close to $70 billion actually, which, yeah. is, which is pretty significant. This sector is continuously going to grow, right? At the same time, you know, uh, India is becoming one of the export base for uh, auto components. So uh, most of the, lot of uh, OEMs, they as the manufacturing base for the exports, which is, uh, you know, various reasons, which is helping India to become as a, a strong potential export oriented manufacturing hub. So one is, you know, in terms of the cost of manufacturing, in terms of what we have in India, uh, second thing is, you know, uh, that our industry has graduated in terms of uh, the kind of quality what we can produce. Mm -hmm. I think that's important because when we talk about the exports part of it. At the same time, if you talk about, the, you know, the geopolitical reasons, which is uh, driving a lot of the global OEMs to deal with uh, supply chain from some of the countries uh, where they're having their potential issues. So that is bringing in a lot of opportunity for us in India. But anything asked from the automobile industry which can help to further uh, grow this? No, I think, see, uh, government is taking a uh, lot of initiatives. I think it is continuously, uh, we, we need to have probably some kind of a mechanism between the industry and the government to continuously stay engaged in terms of understanding what are the areas where we have an opportunities, you know, because at the same time, while we are talking about, uh, you know, some of these capabilities which are available in China, it is going to take some time for us to, uh, while, you know, the PLA scheme is for a certain period, uh, the government will have to have a flexible approach in terms of how to continuously extend it. Uh, because all these things are going to take time, five to ten years for, for India to uh, reach to a level yeah. where probably it can become a, a sustainable alternate to uh, some of these countries, if I can say. The changes which are happening in the automobile sector, right, in terms of getting a much more smarter, right, software, so if you could uh, tell us about, about that, yeah. right, what are the changes or trends uh, in, in that direction. Yeah. yeah. So with the premiumization, kit value increase, the complexities are increasing. Uh, one such trend is the electronic content increase per vehicle. Uh, whether it's a two-wheeler or a passenger vehicle, it's a substantial amount of electronics content which is increasing. There was a study which was saying in passenger vehicle today, something around 15 to 20 percent of electronics which is going to increase in about four to five years to 40 percent. It's really a huge amount of electronics. But always this electronics comes with the software, you know, so-called the embedded software, the millions of codes are now increasing. If you look in the past, uh, the powertrain systems uh, or the traction control system had a maximum amount of uh, lines of code. But now with the increase in the comfort functions, HMI, the human machine interface which comes through the LCD and TFT displays, the number of codes uh, per vehicle is substantially increasing, you know, we say it, it was earlier about uh, 4 to 5 million codes, now it is more than 50-60 million codes in a passenger vehicle, you know. So which means the complexity is increasing and now the trends like uh, AI uh, machine learning, uh, machine learning is the one where the code uh, itself uh, learns, you know, based on the human behavior uh, or object detection and so on. Global OEMs also, right, and players are uh, now uh, coming to India because, okay, as you rightly said, there is certain talent here, engineering as well as now with automation. So if you could just throw us on the global OEMs, uh, what kind of uh, opportunities they are seeing over here and what kind of a base uh, they are looking at India to cater to their global needs. A lot of work 
whether it is in terms of, and maybe Suresh can add as well, you know, in terms of uh, the complexity of the engineering work which is being offshored. India is, is pretty significant, whether it is in terms of, uh, you know, embedded softwares, whether it is in terms of simulations, whether it is in terms of testing and all those things. At the same time, you know, working on the futuristic technologies also, because mm -hmm. I think that kind of a skill set is available in India. And, uh, you know, the global OEMs, while uh, their cost pressures in terms of the global OEMs to compete with some of the competition which is coming from the uh, countries like China and all those places, but at right. the same time, uh, they would like to capitalize on the capabilities of uh, the engineering resources in India to build upon that. So it's not, not just cost also, but also the other capabilities, exactly. now, which is now with the uh, the newer kind of vehicles which are coming in, okay, they require yeah. much of the electronics, software, yeah. where we have the local talent. So, we say that now, I think uh, Indian companies, automobile companies, I think need to spend more on R&D because if you really want to be competitive yeah. or be relevant in the changing world, right? Yes. Yes. So, R&D spreads uh, would, would go up. Yes. And it, yes, definitely. Yeah. Because, you know, first, in order to uh, get yourself inside the OEM suit, uh, you need to be technically very competent, right? So, earlier, uh, there was a clear differentiation between MNCs and Indian companies but the OEM expectations now has increased. So now OEMs are pushed to now make what are the other value add functions which I can give it so that the yeah. uh, users can, uh, you know, buy that, you know. We are at a time where we definitely need to grow as a country who can develop their own technologies and uh, offer, if I can say, not just the innovative solution, but at the same time cost effective solution. Yeah. Because when we talk about, you know, some of the global OEMs, uh, the cost of R&D and engineering is very, very high, right? Yeah. Okay, so welcome to our tech center, SMIT. In the overall, if you look at the country's R&D spend, right? Yes. Almost 8% is in the automotive sector, right? Yes. And so what are the technological trends, okay, shifts which are happening in the sector, if you can talk about it? The software content, of course, increasing from um, you know, the earlier one, the powertrain is the one which had the major part of software. But now, yeah. the HMIs, the clusters, any sensors a you take. Everywhere, I think software. Everything is. is, is yes. So, AI is coming in a big way. Any software you do, the software itself should have some intelligence to uh, sense certain things, diagnose, prognosis, all these stuffs are expected. So, AI is coming in a big way in a car. So, we are really gearing up that. So that brings the capacity, you know, so software related capacity needs to be, um, you know, rise. For example, cyber security is one of the big thing. When you increase the software, it comes with a threat that any, the access of the vehicle or access to your key component can happen by intruder. Then comes with the cyber security. So every software has a cyber security layer. And then comes the functional safety because of the safety related stuff. So when the electronics brought in and you control and activate, huh, brings the safety related stuff, you know. Right. So, when you have to bring the safety, there is a functional uh, safety requirement called ISO 26262. This is a standard, it's a global standard. So, you need to also fulfill the standard. For that, there are certain experts needed in the team. So, you have software, hardware, cyber security, functional safety. So, this whole gamut is R&D, you know. Skill building and uh, you know, training within. Yeah. Uh, what what are you doing? And uh, are there certain things at a very formative level that should be done? Like you know, we were discussing that should in engineering curriculums some of these aspects should be brought in, or there should be specialization. Yeah, because you you can deploy engineers directly from there, or they need to be first certain skill sets need to be upgraded. The new technologies which are coming up, right? Yeah. So there is no ready-made solution available for the skill development, you know. So, but each industry uh, is finding their own way to uh, navigate it. For example. Uh, the tier one uh, industry, especially the electronics, software related uh, industry like us, you know, find a ways and means to work on this. For example, industry academia is a one thing where one good thing in India is that uh, the availability of a freshers, uh, especially from the good engineering colleges exist in India, uh, which is surplus, you know. So now um, there are various level of colleges depending on uh, the suitability of the organization we can hire. And many of us have an internal curriculum which is specially designed for your own area. But then there are other uh, opportunities to academia, you know, where the models like internship models are coming, where the final year we start working with uh, a few universities where we hire the people on the final year, uh, we give them an internship. 
and they start working on the real project with us. You know. By doing this, you know, the the productivity of them can be on the day one. You know, by the time after the internship, they can join us and then work on it. This is a second way we do it. Third, in specific areas, for example, again I'm touching power electronics where still acute shortage of the competency is there in India. We work with uh, universities, especially IITs and uh, signed up MOU with them and work on some specific modules with them. India's drive towards electric vehicles is gaining momentum, opening up a plethora of opportunities and new technologies. As India aims to double its auto industry with its engineering talent and matured manufacturing ecosystem, it stands at the forefront of leveraging the current trends and moving up the value chain to become a shining beacon of the automotive industry globally. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.